We're almost at the close of this year's WEC, and as always, we have a great panel moderated by Matt on the regulatory environment in Washington, D.C., and one of the first comments that I, I recall was what Tom Cohen said about the order, and that was to avoid the noise and keep your head down and do your work. Yes, indeed. Net neutrality and, and how we deal with all of the misinformation regarding net neutrality and, and, and the noise about it, that somehow ISPs are blocking, discriminating, throttling. Uh, that's not the case, and certainly our ACA members from the American Cable Association demonstrate that each and every day because they're committed to their customers and their communities, giving them the services that they want lawfully over the Internet and not degrading it in any way. But there's this perception that ISPs somehow are doing that. Not the truth, but while there is uncertainty in Washington about what happens with challenging Chairman Pai's order, to eliminate Title II and while there will be lawsuits and congressional action, what ISPs, what our members need to do each and every day is their job, provide the best broadband they can in their communities, to demonstrate their commitment to their customers, uh, to do everything that they can to give them the best experience on the Internet, and to show that we're not the problem. We're, we ISPs are the ones giving you access to the Internet. But maybe you ought to go talk to Facebook and Amazon and Netflix and Google and Twitter who are indeed engaging in the same kinds of violations of net neutrality that, that we hear about all the time. Well, and you said it well, be the, continue to be the trusted partner. Absolutely. There, there's no question about that. And see, that's one of the things that we have tried to dispel in this whole debate over net neutrality and application to, to Internet service providers is the fact that before Chairman Pai's order in 2017, before Chairman Wheeler's order in 2015 imposing Title II, and before any of this all happened, our member companies as Internet service providers were invested in innovation, where they put in billions of dollars to deploy broadband. Nobody had to ask them. You don't have to ask us today. We're happy to do it and to give our customers what they want because to tell you the truth, to do the things that the, the net neutrality advocates accuse us of blocking, throttling, discriminating, etc. It's not good business and it's not smart in dealing with our customers and that's why we don't do it. So do your job, be connected to your customers, commit to your community. Well and that's the thing, they are of the community and that makes them a little different than the bigger companies that uh, you were talking about. No doubt, there's no doubt about that and I, and I do think that a lot of this debate regarding imposition of, of rules on internet service providers does come from the fact that as an industry, cable industry in general, it's certainly not one of the, the most liked industries comparatively, and that's something that we have to deal with. And a lot of that is driven by larger companies, and they are big companies, so it stands to reason. We differentiate that fact from, from the standpoint of where we are, where our members live and work, small towns, rural areas. Uh, suburbs, competitive areas where oftentimes they're competing directly against the, the larger companies and where as small companies we have none of the size or the influence that even arguably a larger ISP has. Uh, although I don't think that net neutrality regulation should apply to them either. Uh, but we certainly don't have the power to block, to throttle, to tell a Facebook or a Twitter uh, or an Amazon, nope you can't get on our system. Just not going to happen. And in fact, in the show, we saw examples of partnerships with the likes of Netflix where it's really helping the end consumer, right? Without question. And, and that, that is a place where using our broadband plant and partnering with other over-the-top providers, whether it's through caching devices at the head end or, or other means uh, to, to help uh, employ content efficiently, we can actually give our consumers more of what they want without any degradation, period, because that's our goal. That's what we want to do. And one of the things that they really want are local news, local stations, but it becomes increasingly difficult with retransmission, right? Retransmission consent continues to remain a problem for our members where broadcasters who aren't the broadcasters that they were in 1992 when they were just small little stations, today they're multimedia conglomerates are taking advantage of rules that are 25 years old and more that give them a local monopoly to extract payment for free TV. Our members have seen the, the worst demands that they've ever seen within the last couple of years. Uh, and in fact, members have seen price increases for 
free TV from broadcasters that are 300%, 400%, in some cases even up to 800%. At the same time, broadcast ratings are declining, as is their, their revenue. But the rules haven't changed. And, and frankly, this is something that harms consumers. It harms competition because there isn't any. The rules prohibit any competition. And every dollar that our members need to spend to a, a broadcaster in New York or Los Angeles is a dollar that we don't have to deploy broadband. One of the things that kind of struck me was uh, Bruce's comment about the retransmission agreements yes. and the multicast, the, the multi-channel type of things. And a lot of those programming, it's not just programming that's U.S.-based. You're actually getting foreign channels on there. And I'm wondering, you know, are we kind of forcing that type of programming? Sur surprisingly enough, yes. Uh, one of the things that broadcasters now do repeatedly each and every year uh, each and every retransmission consent uh, cycle is to demand carriage of affiliated programming, uh, alternative programming on their multicast streams, whether it's the My TVs uh, of the world or, or other things like that, the reruns, you know, that sort of thing. But yeah, there's even channels that are Russian based. I'm surprised enough myself to even learn. Um, Congress might be shocked to know that that kind of programming is being carried as a result of retransmission consent, particularly in light of you know all of the political debate we've had over ads from Russia on Facebook, et cetera. So it's an inch issue we're going to look into and, and try to find out more in detail about what is being carried in these multicast streams and really should it. Well, Matt, I, we could talk forever about forever this, obviously, but uh, we will get a chance to catch up at the summit in about a month, right? We're looking, we're looking forward to seeing you at uh, the ACA Summit. It's our 25th anniversary. You can sign up at acasummit.org, March 20th to the 22nd. Come and help us celebrate your 25th anniversary, and we'll see you in Washington, D.C. Thank you, Matt. Thanks, Ken. You bet. Good Take to care. see you, buddy. Thanks. Thanks.